Hi everyone, welcome to Crypto Trading KS. I'm Ken. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently trading at 45,644, up 0.07%. Ethereum trading at 3165, up 1.69%. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. I'm here to share my 20 plus years of trading experience to assist you to accumulate real wealth. Axie Infinity is doing really well. Look at that, up 55.3%. Aave up 5.45%. Rule 710, I am worthy. It's really interesting to think that this is an investing and trading channel. We're all about creating real wealth. Real wealth is far more than money. In fact, it's a lot of things, much more than money. It's about fulfillment and meaning and purpose and fearlessness and empathy, generosity, selflessness. It's about a lot of things on top of having wealth. But realistically, why are these things important at all? Isn't just money the solution to everything? Jesse Livermore was a pioneer of day trading, very, very successful individual. Unfortunately, at age 63, he wrote a suicide note. He killed himself by gunshot. He said, I am unworthy of your love. The real tragedy, of course, is his death, but even more so that passed intergenerationally down. His son, Jesse Jr. committed suicide in February, 1976. And Jesse Jr.'s son, Jesse III, also committed suicide in 2006. What a horrible, tragic thing. When I think about Jesse Livermore's story, I think that there is more to wealth than just money. Having fulfillment and meaning and purpose and empathy and love and determination and gratitude and happiness, inner and outer peace, those things are really, really important. You may say at this moment, Ken, I don't care. I just want money. I don't care about all those things. But it's really important to build them into you as you go. You will find money is an unlimited commodity. You can never have enough of it. But with real wealth, you will find that you have a very beautiful journey. Let's have a look at rule 174, TQ, trend, timing and trigger. We'll go through the trend, looking through the KS process for the true trend. Let's start off with some headlines. The Senate passes the infrastructure bill. It was approved in a 39, sorry, 69 to 30 vote. The Delta variant threatens restaurants rebounding. Millions of Americans are still unemployed despite record job openings. Texas hospitals are nearing capacity as COVID-19 surges again. France and Italy are requiring COVID passports for restaurants and bars. China, China's COVID strategy risks are slowing economic recovery. Chinese bond swings are threatening debt investors, especially over corporate bonds. We'll have a look at that later. SoftBank profits, the world's biggest tech investor, are coming under pressure because of the problems that are happening in China. Opposition to Jerome Powell as Fed chairman for his second term appointment is growing. And the Fed, Evans, is open to reducing asset purchase, uh, purchases later in the year. First of all, we start off with the concept that money can be put and deployed anywhere. Let's think about deploying money into the S&P 500. That's a proxy for stocks. It's up 32%. Gold is down 11%. Bitcoin is up 299% for the past year. A lot of investors see this large percentage return in Bitcoin and say, oh, it just goes up. It's fantastic. I don't have to worry about anything. Bitcoin is incredibly volatile. It keeps most people awake at night because of its volatility. Because of this volatility, it's really important to understand Bitcoin's trend. Let's look into that. When we turn to the KS model, which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology, we can see we're in the bull market psychology segment of this particular run. We have an expectation of much higher prices in the future. 
ranging from 132,000 at the minimum to 288 to 486,000. If you're hodling and you're seeking to sell at the top, this is a really good place to accumulate. If there are any problems, it's just an opportunity to dollar cost average. That would be the predominant theory for hodlers in this particular phase of the bull market. Traders are a little bit different. They would be entering and exiting positions. And a lot of traders can also hold longer term positions. It's absolutely essential to compare same psychologies. The psychology of the bull market is overwhelmingly positive. It's optimistic. Expectations of higher prices dominate that psychology. We must always compare positive to positive to positive. There is a negative, of course, that always plays out in the bear market. That's like when the rocket hits the moon, the rocket, rocket, rocket goes up, hits the moon. The moon says, get out of here, rocket, go back to Earth. Then the bear market occurs where investors expect an 85 percent drawdown in value. However, because Bitcoin is increasing exponentially, it is an exponential asset. These bear markets don't bear a lot of bearing. <laughs> so many bears in there. <laughs> Basically, the reduction of 85% doesn't really squash Bitcoin's price too much. It just keeps on moving up. I'll just prove that out by the Bitcoin long view model. When you see phase one, that's when Bitcoin goes up. Phase two is the bear market. So sunshine of the bull market, bear market, consolidation. Phase one again, sunshine of the bull market, bear market in phase two, consolidation going up. We're in phase one now. This is the bull market. It's just getting started. A lot of people think it's over already, but it's really not. When it comes up to whatever price it actually hits, it will have a bear market and will come down 85%. When it does, it will still be going up in terms of long-term value. As you can see by this upward progression in prices, it will continue. Cryptocurrencies are the next evolution in the internet, and they're actually growing far more quickly in terms of te technological adoption than the internet ever grew. In fact, 80% average yearly growth is what crypto is experiencing right now. You might find it's a little bit faster than that. Crypto.com did a survey and they analyzed global crypto users in January 21, they predicted it was around 106 million. By June 21, that 106 million had grown by an average of 19.2 million users. That's like the population of a, a reasonable sized country every month for the past six months. It's growing very, very quickly. So comparing same psychologies, where are we? Think about net unrealized profit and loss, which is called Nupal. This is how we interpret that diagram, that chart. Euphoria creates blow off tops. We've not seen euphoria in the current market. And if we don't see euphoria after a halving, we certainly don't care about seeing capitulation. That's just not on the cards. In the bull market, the overwhelming expectation is of ever increasing prices until they became uh, become unsustainable. Then we reach the peak where euphoria blows off in a rational exuberance. And then we have that 85% decline that ends in capitulation, points one and point two. By the current standard, we're around here, which places us in the past cycle around there. We have quite some way to go until we hit the peak. When we understand realized cap holder waves, we're expecting three peaks. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Currently, we just have one. We're expecting two more. When the price of Bitcoin expands exponentially, we have these blow off tops in terms of relative unrealized profit. It means that people are sitting on a lot of unrealized profit. We've had one wave of this. We are expecting two more. The number of exchanges transfers to all exchanges. When we reach a peak, we get a lot of transfers of Bitcoin to exchanges. 
We're currently here at the moment. What that means is we're a long way from the top. We're just basically down here. You can see that all the different data points are consolidating. They're confirming each other. If we look at the Puel multiple, which is really about mining rewards, mining revenue divided by the average yearly mining revenue, we can see we're around 0.1. That's around here in the past cycle. We can see that we've got a long way to go yet, which would be something like this if we were to draw it in. A lot of people have already, already basically said that they've missed the run. I don't think so. That's really not the truth. If a lot of people seek to buy at the bottom and sell at the top, they may feel that way. But you can never buy at the bottom because you only know it's occurred after the fact. Really what you want to do is to invest in the sweet spot in the market, certainly trade there. Any accumulation in Bitcoin, according to the on-chain data, would be an investment at this stage. If we have the infrastructure bill cause a potential problem, it's just a great buying opportunity. That's certainly how I'm looking at it. So what kind of price action could we expect moving forward based on the past? When we look to the previous cycle, the 2016 cycle that most reflects the price action in this current area of Bitcoin, we saw a cutting down of the low and a big rally up. Now, what happened after this? What actually happened? You can see prices rally pretty much like what it's done now. Don't forget this in actually July 17, 2017. Look at this. It decided to go down. Now, what does that mean? Of course, when you have a big, big surge in the price, it's fair for people to take profit. That is normal price behavior. Price is always moving in a wave. It's going down and then up and down and then up. And what else happens? People think, oh, I've missed it. It's gone so far. It's never coming back. And then it comes back to this high. There are many, many ways to trade in and invest into price when it's going up. But it's really, really important for you to understand as well. Price also comes down. We really try to lower the average buy price by taking advantage of these tails wherever we can. What is the conclusion from all of this? If you are a long-term investor in Bitcoin, you understand what it does. You believe in the future of Bitcoin, despite any regulations, just like you could have believed in the future of the internet many years ago. You would just be accumulating. You would just take all of these dips as signs to load up. The only thing that I would recommend is when you have these kind of days, which are sell days, you load up especially there because that is a <laughs> it's a very, very good strategy with Bitcoin because it is incredibly volatile. Of course, that's not financial advice. You just have to do whatever you think is right. We saw in the news headlines that the Delta variant is causing problems. Let's look into health issues across the globe. Looking at cases in the past seven days, there were 4,457,649. That's an increase of 5% per week. We're looking at certain countries. We're really seeing if this negative number is happening. We're seeing more negatives at the moment. A couple of people reached out in the community and they talked about a variety of different other factors that could be good to look at. If you have any sources, please let me know. I'm more than happy to share it. This is really a community driven channel. Anything I can do to help give you a higher quality of information, I'm 100% behind. When we rank by total population, we can see some negatives in there, but we also see, unfortunately, quite a few positives. When we look at John Hopkins University, we can see the vaccine doses administered by different countries. We can see the different waves of weekly cases first wave, second wave, we are in the third wave now. 
the good thing is that weekly deaths are falling. I always talk about the association between the stock markets, precious metals, Bitcoin, crypto. That's really important because money is very diverse. It can go anywhere chasing a return. That's why it's really important to have a look at market indexes or market indices. Using the Fidelity business cycle update for the third quarter of 2021, we can see China and the US is around mid-stage recovery. A lot of countries are early stage and some are just in recovery. Our community's focus is on crypto. So why don't we just get into crypto? The real reason is that you need to understand basically, if you want to be successful and profitable and not have all your money disappear, the best thing that you can possibly do is understand the entire market. That may seem like a bit of a drag, but it's really not a problem compared to losing everything you've got. It took me many years to understand this very basic fact. When I first started, I didn't care about VIX and stock markets. I just wanted to go into my beloved investment and I didn't care about anything else. I didn't even care about the leaders in the segment that that investment was in. Wow, I was in for an eye-opening experience. I do these videos to help you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. I do that by sharing all my experiences as best I can when it's relevant to help you to think in a very powerful and profitable manner. We can see the VIX here is decreasing. That is actually quite a good sign for stocks. Here I've drawn the inverse VIX. I flipped its scale upside down. What it shows, the inverse VIX, when the inverse VIX goes down, guess what stocks do? Look at that. What a correlation. Quite amazing. There you go. And what we've seen, that fear gauge is showing that prices are increasing. But what's happening here? We're getting what you might call a bit of a diversion. The actual NASDAQ 100 is starting to lose this support. We're not too worried about it at the moment, but everybody would be looking at that saying, hmm, we need to keep our eye on it. What I've done here is just overlay the price of Bitcoin, its current real-time price in terms of the NASDAQ 100. You can see that Bitcoin was going down and diverted, the NASDAQ went up. I believe what's happening is we're getting a flow from the stock market into Bitcoin. I pointed out the potential of that happening around three weeks ago. Looking at the S&P 500, it's holding support. The Russell 2000 is just a little bit under this resistance, but it's not too bad. We can see a little weakening in the Dow Jones. We're seeing a little bit of negative air above this particular line, but we're just keeping our eye on it for the moment. There's a high, there's a higher high, there's a higher high, and there is a higher high. It is weak, but it is moving up. Looking at the TSX, Canada's index, Canada's stock market is improving. China's Shanghai Composite Index is improving in value. It showed a little bit of weakness. There were a lot of government clampdowns on technology and education and a variety of other things, but there's been an improvement. It's now above that resistance. China's Hang Seng Index is also improving. It showed weakness here, but it's since recovered. India's stock market is doing really well. It's above support. South Korea's Kospi 200 is decaying in price. It's under some negative price momentum. Japan's Nikkei 225 continues to gain in strength. Mexico's index is also gaining in strength above support. Brazil's index has been showing a bit of weakness currently. The UK's FTSE 100 index continues to rally. Germany's DAX 30 is seeking to approach that resistance. Italy's index is above the pre-COVID high. It's coming up to approach another past level of resistance. 
France's CAC 40 index is on a tear. It's past the COVID high some time ago. It's seeking to attack the previous all-time high level. Go France! Australia's index has got over the previous COVID high, which was actually its all-time high as well. It's rallying out into price discovery. Spain's index, the IBEX 35, is still below the previous COVID high. The Swiss index is above the previous COVID high and rallying on strength. Singapore's STI index is just under the COVID high. It's making a play for it. Looking at the five-year break-even inflation rate, we can see it's being supported currently. It's going up. The five-year forward inflation expectation rate is also going up. It's increasing. The 10-year break-even inflation rate is also increasing. It's, an in it's actually increasing at an increasing rate. Looking at the TLT, the 20-plus year Treasury Bond ETF, we can see the TLT is increasing, but it's experienced some dramatic weakness just recently. It's probably easier to see it on this particular graph. This is just an area diagram. If we look here, we can see the TLT is under that one support. It's turned to resistance. We can see the price of gold has actually dropped below that one support. It's turned to resistance, but it's ha actually dropped like a brick. We've been witnessing the sell-off in gold recently as we do the analysis of different investment vehicles every episode. We can also see that silver has likewise broken down. Bitcoin has been on a bit of a tear recently. What I've done is just take this angle and cloned it back to here, back to here, back to here, and back to here. It just allows you to get a bit of an insight into how price is moving relative to past performance. This is a very strong move up. Looking at crypto total market cap, total market cap is doing really well. It's trading at $1.857 trillion. Looking at the 10 year treasury note yield, it's improving dramatically back up to that resistance. The 30 year treasury bond yield, the TYX, is increasing significantly. It's breaking out. The high yield corporate bond ETF is breaking down. In terms of an early warning system, we need to keep our eye on the high yield corporate bond ETF. We see back to the last sell off, we had a weakening and then a quite sharp drop down. We're not seeing that sharp drop down just yet, but it is looking really weak. Copper is also a leading indicator of problems. We see copper consolidating around support. That's a good sign. If the Delta variant was killing the airline industry and lopping off transportation, we would expect to see very sharp breakdowns in these indexes. The New York Stock Exchange ARCA airline index is showing relative strength. That is a good sign. The US Transportation ETF, the IYT, is showing strength. It's broken across that resistance, turn it into support, and seeking to take out the resistance above it. The NASDAQ transportation index is also showing a breakout here in strength. The Dow Jones transportation average, the DTX, is showing consolidation. It's not showing weakness. That is also a good sign. Utilities typically rally quite sharply before any particular problem emerges within the economy, we can see that the utility sector has actually broke out, broken out from that resistance. It's in an uptrend, but it's not really taking off. A very powerful indicator of forewarning or foreboding in the markets is a sell-off in Brent oil. We've seen a little bit of weakness here, but it's actually consolidating around there. It's not continued weakness. That is a good sign. Light crude oil is also recovering. That's likewise a very good sign. 
the DXY has broken out from resistance on strength. It's taking, trying to take out this previous high here. It's actually improving quite well. We can see that the DXY tracks Bitcoin, has been tracking Bitcoin's price movement on a relative basis reasonably well. A stronger dollar doesn't mean that Bitcoin is coming down. We can see that as Bitcoin came up, the dollar was also coming up. As the dollar came down, Bitcoin came down. We're not necessarily saying that the dollar causes Bitcoin's behavior to move in a certain direction. It does have some bearing, but we're saying there is an association between the variables. Okay, let's have a look into the crypto stocks. We had to paint the picture across all the indices, all the indexes, globally and otherwise, all the early warning economic data that could potentially create problems. We're seeing things are basically looking okay. There's a little bit of weakness in a major index. We'll need to keep our eye on that and a little bit of weakness in the corporate bonds, but we'll see how it goes. No cause for concern. I always try to reinforce this concept deal with problems when they occur, not before they occur. There's no problem in taking some profits as you go along. If things are looking pretty good, that's just normal behavior. That just actually gives you more dry powder. That's a good thing. But dealing with problems, going all in or going all out at a particular time, that's highly unadvisable. Layering in and layering out is the correct way of thinking. Looking to the majors in the stock market, Apple, it's just below that resistance, showing a little bit of weakness. Microsoft was actually breaking out. It's just coming back to retest that line. Google Alphabet Inc. is holding that resistance. It's not quite just yet above it, but it's really trying. Amazon.com continues to show weakness. It's creating negative air above or below that resistance level at the moment. Facebook is showing a little bit of weakness. It tried to get through that resistance, not done so yet. Nvidia broke out of resistance, turned it to support, has rallied up, just got a little pullback happening at the moment. PayPal recently has shown weakness too. It's on the way down. Netflix recently hit this support, bounced, hit another resistance and it's just retracing at the moment. Let's have a look through the Bitcoin ETFs. What I want to do is to share something with you called relative strength analysis. Relative strength analysis is that we draw the same conceptual strength line on each diagram to compare their relative strengths. Here we have a bottom, here we have the first bounce. This is in grayscale Bitcoin trust. If we go to coin shares, Bottom, first bounce. Purpose, bottom, first bounce. 3IQ, bottom, first bounce. You get the idea. What we're doing is showing the relative comparison between all of these different Bitcoin ETFs. We're not trying to fit exact support and resistance lines here. We're trying to figure out which ETF is strongest. Always go with strength. Please never pick weakness. Weak remains weak, strong remains strong on the balance of probabilities. Okay, I'll just put that to candle so you can see more effectively the underpinning price action. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is just at resistance. CoinShares physical Bitcoin is above support. We can see the relative strength differences playing out here. Purpose Bitcoin ETF, stronger, it's above resistance. Of this support. Three IQ coin shares, a lot of strength in there, positive air, always a good thing. BTC ETC is above support. The Bitcoin fund is above support. Bitwise 10 crypto index fund is below support, but it's really trying to recover here. Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund is way above support. There's quite a bit of power in that. 21 shares Bitcoin is just 
meandering along that support line. Van Eck is doing the same, hugging the support line. CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF is showing strength. It's above support. Osprey Bitcoin Trust is decaying below that now resistance line, but it's trying to consolidate and come up. Nine point Bitcoin ETF is above support. A lot of positive air in there. That's very good. The Bitcoin ETF is performing well. Positive air above support. Let's look at public companies that have Bitcoin. MicroStrategy is above support. Tesla is consolidating above support. Galaxy Digital has 16,400 Bitcoin. It's hugging that support line. Voyager Digital is indeed going up, but on a relative basis with the other particular comparable ones, it's below resistance. Square has done a breakout through this resistance, turned it into support and continues up. Marathon Digital continues to rally. Coinbase Global is doing really well. It's rallying up. HUD8 Mining is also rallying up. The Bitcoin Group SE is below that comparative line of resistance. It is still trying to make a play to improve its price. Riot Blockchain is doing well. It's hugging that upward support line. Bitfarms has been doing really, really well recently. It found a cradle and basically took off. ARB Argo Blockchain is continuing to realistically decay in price just at the moment, but it is above that downward support line. Hive Blockchain has broken out of this resistance, just coming back in for the retest. Bit Digital was doing really well. It's just coming in for the retest of that support. Silvergate Capital Corporation broke out from resistance, coming back in for a retest. So many beautiful community members reached out and bought me a cup of coffee on buymeacoffee.com. I want to thank them very much for that. And as a special thing, I want to put something together for you, for everybody that contributed to me to say thank you for what I'm doing. I also want to reach back and say thank you for thanking me. I'll, over the next month, I will we'll put some things together for you and just message you through buymeacoffee.com. Thanks so much again. I hope you found the content useful. Please be aware of scammers and thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe. Please always remember crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and the worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time.